valid, and Weaver buy back ultimate, get back team fights, next level meta game. Okay. Hey, right, thanks for the intro, Luminous, because I started recording after that. But uh, no new new meta has just been discussed. This is the grand finals of the Fragmite Thor Open Qualifier number five between Virtus Pro and uh, CPL, which I think is Clan Poland. Virtus Pro been steamrolling everybody. Uh, CPL uh, watched a bit of their last match. They seem to win in a pretty dominating fashion. So hopefully, get some even games with me. Is uh, Luminous just for this game because he has an appointment, but hopefully it's a good one. You know how Virtus Pro's been steamrolling everybody? Weaver. Yep. Buy back. Ult back in. I think that's never actually happened. That hasn't actually <laughs> happened yet, so... Uh, it would be pretty cool to see it happen though, but uh, we'll wait and see. Seems like the game is just not going... I think, uh, I guess there was one additional me. spectator. It was that there we go. Guy. Star under star is uh, well. We have a lot, actually a lot of observers in this game. I do. Yeah. At least four. You, me, two others, and Dang, the personal. Four. That's a lot. That's a <laughs> lot, man. That's a lot. Anyways, uh, Virtus Pro been steamrolling everybody. CPL. Not too sure. Uh, hopefully, uh, like I've been saying all tournament, this is a return to form for Virtus Pro, or uh, at least a a momentum boost, so uh, they can. You know, be very competitive. NS, huge fan of NS uh, for his whole Dota career. Meanwhile, CPL from Poland. Not too sure anything about them, but they played Bat Rider on Dying last game, so of course... Uh, That's reason enough to share, yeah. yeah. And I, I'm cheering for CPL as well because they have, like, cabbage, mm. paper flower. Like, that's some, I like names like that, you know, they're creative, they're fun. We'll see if uh, Virtus.pro can turn cabbage into kimchi. Oh, shit. Dang. All right, here we go. <laughs> Virtus Pro, first pick, first ban here on the Radiant side, banning Syllabir or Lone Druid, as well as Templar Assassin, leaving themselves a Bat Rider in the pool. And of course, do, uh, the Undying's banned out and a Dark Seer, so bat. Yep, I guess uh, Virtus Pro watched a bit of the last game where CPL's uh, Lone Druid went to work as Bat Rider picks up the first pick, Bat Rider immediately responded with Jakiro and Rubik by CPL. Uh, Virtus Pro making very strong use of Jakiro this whole turn, but you know. They can win other ways as well, but uh, very versatile lineup. Jakiro Rubik, uh, really strong push, or at least they have Liquid Fire, they have Long Range Stun, they have Rubik, who's probably the new win runner, one of the most versatile heroes in the game. So we'll see how Virtus Pro decides to approach their next two picks. Uh, they could try to solidify their potential try lane, they could try to pick up their K, they could get that off lane, but if uh -oh. they're going to pick up Night Stalker, and that means we're going to see probably a support Bat Rider by NS again. Well, we could see a long lane bat rider as well. That's a definitely a possibility. But never mind, <laughs> Bounty Hunter is going to be a long lane. You actually did mention this previously uh, when talking about Virtus Pro. They've been drafting these kind of lineup very much so, right? Bounty Hunter on the off lane, nice. Yeah, especially one. against Rubik because there's not really a great spell for Rubik to steal aside from track. Well, if track. he gets track, you know that's pretty OP. Or uh, I guess the Shadow Walk's decent as well. But yeah, you're not you don't mind too much with you know your Void gets taken. Your Napalm gets stolen. Those are not exactly game-turning spells, so yeah, I, I completely agree. But that that lineup you've been mentioning, once you're past minute six, suddenly the whole map just explodes because everybody's getting ganked. Yeah, the key to this lineup is uh, Santa, because unfortunately in the last games for the opposing teams, they have not been doing a good job in terms of eliminating Santa's experience. So usually by minute six, uh, Banner is like level four, or level five, and Night Stalker, of course, will be level six. And Banner can get on the roll with that Night Stalker trackle and then just steamroll their team into the ground. So if they manage to limit Santa's farm or limit Santa's experience, they should be okay, at least in weathering the first night. But still, it is very scary. So we'll see if uh, CPL can really shut down Santa as I think that will be the key to the game. Yep, don't forget that Bat Rider also has a possibility of, instead of going to Drongo to try lane Bat, we've seen it like rarely, it doesn't work all the time, uh, but if Virtus Pro want to run something like that, th that's definitely possible, but uh, that's not what we're expecting. Tie Hunter, Jakiro, and Rubik is going to be the first three pick here. I, I feel like this lineup is a little bit slow, they need a lot of EXP to work with, so the first six minutes is going to be absolutely key, they can't give away too many kills, and they, they gotta get a couple kills themselves, because Past six minutes, that's when nighttime gets online. That's when Bounty Hunter is getting very, very close to minute six. And that's when Batrider, if he's having a very, very good farm, gets to at least upgraded boots and start working towards that blink dagger. It's like the gank is going to happen so very quickly that you have to buffer yourself in the six minutes. Grab boots, grab base, bracer, magic wand, upgrade, magic stick. So very, very crucial first six minutes for CPO. And Virtus Pro always dominate every single lane the first six minutes anyway. So that's the key for me. At least in this tournament. Yes. Um, 
Like, uh, yeah, just to sort of emphasize your point on movement. How they catch Barret, how they catch Nightstalker, how they catch a phase mood track Gondar or Bounty Hunter in this game. Not really too sure. They should try to pick some more mobility heroes because right now they're very slow, like you said, and Tide Hunter until he gets level 6, and even if he does hit level 6, the fact that Virtus Pro has such, such short cooldown on all their major spells, aside from last one in the early game, means that they can take team fights quite frequently without too much fear of the Tide Hunter. Only Ice Path will really eliminate some of that. And Virtus Pro making some smart bands, betting out uh, pushers and turtlers, because uh, their lineup is very gank oriented and uh, people who can turtle, who, people who can push very hard do shut down these heroes, at least in team fights. So Benny, Keep the Light, Juggernaut, Broodmother all make a bunch of sense. Me on CPL. Bending out the junglers, uh, not too sure if Pro would have picked it up because, like you said, uh, NS, at least the first time he did it, waited for level 2 in the trial lane, then just jungled it up with Batrider, so mm -hmm. not too sure if bending out the junglers is the most appropriate choice by CPL, but maybe they're just unsure. And Luna, mm -hmm. again, was part of their stable strategy. Uh, Luna, uh, sorry, I'm sort of uh, going on and on, but Luna has actually not seen too much success. Actually, a uh, pretty low 1% aside from IG in the International 2. But Virtus.pro has been making her work. They go for an ex extremely powerful timing attack. Uh, when it hits level 6 with a couple points of Lunar Blessing, the fact that she's also very fast as well, man, yeah. I think CPL might be in a lot of trouble. I mean, the, the skill build and the item build that she goes for is perfect for the way that Virtus Pro's play. Um, her ha she has, what, 330 basement movement, base movement speed. You add plus 80 because of the Tranquil Boots that she's mostly like, going to get. Drums is a very popular choice on Luna, and suddenly she's popping the drum charge, the entire team almost moving at maximum movement speed. So it's a great chasing lineup. Eclipse is great for this kind of gameplay. And Lunar's Blessing is great for tower pushing. Uh, again, I talked about how sometimes you get a very offensive killing team and you just can't knock down too many towers. Venomancer and Lunar Blessing is going to add a lot to that. Venomancer is going to be the closing pick here, providing the necessary early game uh, defensiveness as well as uh, some chasing power in the mid game. Of course, Venomancer Ultimate is no joke. Although, again, I don't think it's anything too crazy. But with Venomancer and Luna being picked up, I guess Rubik has a little bit better spell selection. If you can still, you know, Eclipse or something like that, that would be pretty sweet. Uh, but for now, it seems like uh, the CPL team is trying to tank it up. Uh, if we can't outspeed you, we'll try to outlast you in a sense. But it's, again, it's I feel like mobility is a little bit more important. At least in the early get-go of the game, where towers are a little bit more spread out, where TP you're not you're not survival enough to survive long enough for the TP counter ganks to come in. Um, and, and having mobility in this stage of game is helpful. So let's see how it's going to pan out. I think it's going to come down a lot into the laning stage, and it's going to be a Phantom Lancer. How bold is it to go into this this pick when Bounty Hunter, first of all, is already available, when in the late game situation, Luna with Glaive could have something to say about your illusions, and finally, he contributes little to nothing in the early game. And if I have not set like a broken record, this game is going to be determined very much so by the first six minutes. I think Virtus Pro actually faced a pretty similar lineup. I think uh, Jakiro was swapped out for Venomancer, and uh, the other team got Keeper of the Light to pair with that Venomancer. Or, yeah. But Virtus Pro pretty much steamrolled them, like they've been doing throughout this tournament. So they have experience against this type of lineup. And uh, really, PL, I'm not too sure. I'd like a hero that can really kill Santa. And unfortunately, I don't think a really Jakiro... Tide Hunter, Phantom Hunter Lane can really shut him down. We'll see if Tide Hunter goes in mid solo position, as we as we've been seeing a lot this tournament, but against the Night Stalker. But I guess we'll find out very soon. I mean, to be fair, Phantom Lancer does have a pretty respectable early game nuke, and not only that, it has a fairly low cooldown. So if he is involved in the at least of offensive part of that team fight, like he could actually contribute more than most other carries. But defensively, like you know, he he's gonna just get picked off. He most likely, I want to see if he's going for an item, it should be Treads into, or Tranquil Boots into a, a Purge Blade. Like, I, I don't think they will have time to go into Radiance, but, you know, you never know if they're going to just go very far ahead to win the early game or something like that. By getting a Lucky First Blood or knocking down a couple of Tier 1 Towers, that could happen. So let's not count CPL out just yet. Vex is going to be handling the Rubik. We have Cabbage, uh, hopefully not Kimchi by the end of this game, playing Tai Hunter. Paper Flower uh, playing the Jikuro. Sasu on the Phantom Lancer, and last but not least, we have Beastmaster being handled by... Nemerianos. Ah, Nemerianos, okay. Meanwhile, on the Virtus Pro squad, we have the carry being played yet again by Airman. Uh, looks like uh, Wild is playing the Tame My Wild, XXX is playing the Night Stalker. Uh, Santa, Sanya Bandit is playing the Bounty Hunter, KSI is playing the Venomancer, and that means NS is playing the Bat Rider. So, uh, Virtus Pro, they've used this lineup in the past, and they steamrolled with it. 
Um, but really, I think again, the key is going to come down to shutting down Santa before NS or Night Stalker can really get going. And look at this, Night Stalker bottle first. I mean, yep. something that we. No, know, they've been is... running this throughout the tournament. And it is going right. to be a Titan to Mid again. So, man, this is like deja vu. I've seen this in like two or three games Titan to versus NS Mid. Uh, NS. <laughs> All right, Mine's so B-Ball's well. got this. I'm going to sit here with my cigar <laughs> and my monocle and just watch. My bad, dude. You got anything to say? No, 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 no. Seriously. You, no. Like, what, what, what is the reason? I'm, I'm curious, though. What is the reason for the battle first, if you've seen this game? Sort of, you know. Well, I mean, uh, and, uh, Night Stalker, he knows that he'll probably just uh, use Voids for some last hits, try to get himself some early rune control, because they will have it with the Batrider jungling. And uh, just able to transition to his mid-game items. The problem with NS is that sometimes when you don't have the best early start, you don't really have the Earn Boots uh, bottle up by the 6 minute mark. But usually with this build, you manage to get all of those items up if you don't manage to uh, get ganked. And looks like they don't anticipate on getting ganked. Yep, and you can see that he's actually chilling his courier right by the tier 1 tower. So we're going to do uh, some, a little bit early game uh, bottle curling. is going to be bottling it up. And to be honest, because the mana cost is so low, you're getting at least four or five extra creeps with, with the help of that. I think he should even hold it till minute two and see if he's going to get the root, or maybe he's going to go for the bottle curl right now. And also, this bat rider is doing uh, some level one pulling here as you could stack the camp. That courier got to be careful though. Hopefully, it does not uh, be extinct because you, you don't want puppies to die. It's a sad, sad time. Yep. Oh, it's a juggernaut war dog. And yeah. you know, uh, at least they're doing a better job shutting down Santa. Usually, Santa in these games have been level two. But uh, the creep wave has been pulled to the tower, so we'll see if it gets pushed. Meanwhile, Luna having a free farm on the bottom lane, out farming the PL at this point. Yeah. But usually a farming PL will trump a farm Luna. But Luna actually fares decently because of the glaives, like you mentioned. Yep. Uh, also, if you're looking at uh, Nimeon or the Miranos on the bot lane, he's, <laughs> he's trying a very difficult time to de ward this. At least wasted a, a couple of axes and, and not hitting anything. He has, of course, no EXP. Finally has found that Sentry Ward. Uh, but that Sentry Ward, I think, has done a really enough uh, part of his job. Uh, overall, farm, a very, very slow game. Every time I say this, though, uh, the action just really hasn't picked up yet. And I don't, again, I don't expect the action to pick up until the first nightfall. Yep, looks like Tyranto is going to get himself a haste rune. Um, he's going to have his bottle up very, very soon. Unfortunately, he won't have the bottle up in time to pick up that haste rune. And meanwhile, the curse constantly being delivered a bottle for Night Stalker. He's going to have an urn. Tyranto going to do a bit of damage. Probably Ooh. should not dive too deep, as if he's going to take a void. And NS now has a bottle, so it'll be just fine. And meanwhile, NS the Batrider has Firefly hit level 2, so he's going to be able to get a lot of experience that way. Yeah, how awkward is it that NS the player is not playing NS the hero? Like, Ennis is actually Night Stalker, right? That's what he named it as. Did he? Yeah, I think so. Mm, not sure. I always, uh, I know it's not this, but I always call him, uh, Notorious Support. Notorious Support, that's a, that's a pretty good name. Bandit on the top lane here, getting level 3 and Shadow Walk at two and, uh, 1 and two, one and 3. And we're seeing some, uh, Warcraft 3 action up in this because we're gonna see some, uh... Creepjacking. Creepjacking, <laughs> although there's nothing to jack. And they don't drop items, or a lot of EXP. But, you know. And look at the Sentry Ward again being placed by the Radiant outside the Sentry range. Do you know if that blocks the pull? I want to say no, but we'll see pretty soon, I think. Uh, well, we'll see in a bit. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think so. But it, it looks close enough. Yeah, it might have. Uh, Beastmaster did attempt the pull. Um, not too sure, though. Uh, Santa, his level 3. Night Stalker faring quite well, level 4. Has the boots, gonna have the earn up by the 6 minute mark, and then he'll start getting the gank train going. Uh, so maybe they should consider ganking the Night Stalker as the Kerr delivers the bottle and a stout shield to the Tide Hunter. Tide Hunter fan quite well, but you know, the fun has not yet started. Yeah, I think Ty is actually gonna go for a kill right now. Anger Smash? Ooh, he went for the one extra hit and then go for the Anger Smash, and now Night Stalker picking up a boot of speed, probably gonna go for a kill. And I don't think he can, but as he say that, he's going right in. Gush, Anger Smash, but here comes the Bat Rider. One Napalm stack, adding a little bit of physical DPS. Is that gonna be enough? A second Void's gonna come in right now, and that's the first blood. Oh, he went for the kill. Ty Hunter did, but unfortunately, Bat Rider kind of threw a wrench in that plan. Uh, Rune's gonna spawn on the bot lane. The pull attempt not gonna be there, so it is actually gonna be blocked. Oh, yeah. Man, two sentry wards being placed, and they can't find this ward. <laughs> what a ward! You gotta remember that, man. Yeah. That is uh, it's just like it's the first one was like on this awkward angle. The second one is yeah, six stuff, six stuff. You should put that in your guide, I guess. What guy? Kind of guy. Uh, whatever. Your next uh, warding thing. 
Come out with one every I, other I would day. never make a warning thing. It takes way too much time. And there's too many good warning guys out there already, right? Yep, that is true. Meanwhile, Luna, 32 and 14. PL, 32 and 7. Uh, both farming rather well. PL saving up a lot of money. Not going for straight relic, usually is the case in this uh, these days. Because Night Stalker and Bounty Hunter will be able to uh, gank it quite frequently, fix up the strength treads uh, instead of the Tranquil Boots. So might just be skipping drums, not too sure why he picked up the treads rather than Tranquil Boots. Yeah, we'll probably see in in, uh, in a bid uh, to maybe to really understand it. I guess having the extra access into the HP point might be very relevant. Uh, oh, since you were being away. dropped, Telekinesis on Santa on the top lane. Uh, Spirit Lance is it on cooldown. It is. They're going to drop another Spirit Lance. They will get the kill. Nice. Nicely done. That was extremely important. Yep, and that's exactly what I mean about the uh, early game power of Phantom Lancer. Uh, a little bit more contribution in terms of the lane, in terms of killing. So, yeah, pretty good to see him do that. I also am a big fan of his current skill build. He just has that one point into double walk for defensive purposes. Um, and because it's only in one point, he, he probably doesn't even have the uh, mana to use it. it. has this very highly level, a uh, highly uh, mana cost. But the cool thing about that having that only one point is you, you put the rest in your stats. And he really needs the extra survivability. And to be honest, you could nuke a little bit more with the uh, spirit lines. Well, now the fun is going to start. It is nighttime, and the six-minute rune is about to spawn. Night Stalker guessing gets it right, so <laughs> that's going to be unfortunate for the Tide Hunter. And the war did expire, so Tide Hunter does not know, and he knows there are people in the jungle. Will he hunt them? Actually, going to go on the offensive. Knows Phantom Lancer probably doesn't have enough mana for the double walk. Uh, he's just uh, running around back and forth, but here comes the gank on the PL. He has no mana for Joppa walk. And that might have cost him as uh, he's definitely going to die. Really unfortunate. Will he die? He's tangling out nicely. No, Night Stalker is going to chase him to oh, the end. He oh, has Ravage for one. Salve up. PL. Can he live? Oh, Batrider comes in with the Napalm revealing. And it uh, looks like Night Stalker does manage to get the kill. Batrider is still fire flying up. Night Stalker is balling. He has the earn to go on defensive stacks. He's level stacks. one. Beastmaster. That Beastmaster. Oh Look God. at that one nuke. Holy God. Beastmaster oh goes down. That's two extra two easy kills. I mean, I like the, the fact that they use Ravage to defend this. I have no idea why Beastmaster was even walking near that uh, vicinity. He should be defending bot. And, he was uh, uh, jungling, trying to get some experience because that well, spot. Well, you know, he's going to get some EXP now. Probably going to hit level 2. This is probably one of the worst uh, experience I've seen a long lane ever had. And that's that's saying a lot because most long lanes there, you know, they, they had their fair shares of that bad experience. Meanwhile, down here taking a bunch of damage for the tower. Wands up, but he will take the fall. But Night Stalker just getting started is already dominating. Gonna go on to the Voided. Uh, looks like he's gonna teleport out. Nice recognition, but hey, he manages to waste 135 gold. Meanwhile, Beastmaster dies still level 1 to a Luna. I think pretty much solo. Yeah, Luna just ran plas, uh because she has a 410 movement speed, 405, a lot of MS. And just Eclipse, Beastmaster level 1, don't even have boot speed just yet. CPL. Again, like I said, this game is going to be dictated by early game, and I think with just the past one and a half minutes, the early game is very much so in the hands of the Radiant team. And I don't think Virtus Pro will look back. Uh, the, night, the first Nightfall will be over soon, but I, well, in a couple of minutes. But I think by that time, the, 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 the Radiant squad is going to be so tanky, so much more far ahead that they don't really even need nighttime for Night Soccer to be that effective. Bounty Hunter is getting revealed by that Sentuar. PL going for a smart decision, not saying up for the Relic, realizes he needs damage, gets defusal rather than anything like a vanguard because PL without damage uh, will just get completely owned by this very aggressive team. But he needs a little bit of help on the top lane here. Dust going on him. Flaming Lasso. Sasu losing HP very rapidly. And this gank is going to put Bandit to level 6. So very critical. Allow him to actually put, propel his team much, much further ahead in terms of gold. Back on the bot lane here. Paper Flower is about to be the Paper Dragon. Oh, the nukes are coming in right now. He does drop an Ice Pat, but would not be enough. Of course, Cabbage does not have cooldown for his Ravage just yet. Silence on Cabbage. Are they going to go? I, I think it's easy to go for the Beastmaster. I mean, he's actually a lot squishier, but... Seems like they're happy with uh, what they have so far. Man, this has just become a relentless onslaught. Uh, usually Night Stalker wants to get level 10, level 11 even by the end of the first night. And he's well on his way. He's level 8. And he's going to have Darkness up too, uh, to extend the night if he chooses to go for it. Actually, a uh, bit curious because Tame My Wild XXX usually gets uh, level 6 Darkness. But I guess he didn't need it for the ganks and he's just uh, chilling. Yeah, I've been seeing different players. Uh, I think it's actually a personal taste or maybe a degree of the situation, but some players just skip darkness altogether on the first night and they because they think it's such a low duration that it's not even uh, useful. 
and, and some players they take it at level six. So I, I, I personally don't have an opinion on it because I don't really know. But here you go, Gank behind the tier one tower. This war just scoping out everything. They see Sasu and Sasu has the upper walk, but that's what's tracked for. Down to half HP. The gank relentless on Sasu. Sasu is going to be dead for sure. And now they focus on on Vex. That that urn of shadow has done so much for NS right now. Uh, nice Docker, not the not the player, uh, pops, simply because. Yep, pops the darkness and uh, sorry, what were you gonna say? Yeah, I just wanted to say urn is probably one of the more important core item you you could pick up here on Nice Docker before the first nightfall, and it's uh I, I guess now it makes a lot of sense that why he went bottle first because you're not uh you know getting all the extra regeneration uh, items, you're not getting extra tangles. You can rush urn a, a, a couple of spells being dropped here. Ravage still being retained here, but Nice Soccer, the flying vampire, he's coming right in, and they see Cabbage, and that Cabbage kimchi status right now, man. Yo, he ain't flying. He ain't got no wings. R.I.P. Wings, indeed. <laughs> it looks like Nice Soccer Ace or he's just <laughs> his animation looks so awesome. Like, what is he doing? <laughs> He's just hovering. He's, oh he's like, really, he's a legit vampire. That he is reminds amazing. me of like Magneto. <laughs> That's how Magneto moves, right? Yeah, levitation, Holmes. <laughs> just, oh my god. All right, and, he, sees, uh, he sees PL on the top lane. Needs to get off the silence, and he does. And here we go. There's one void. Urn being used, and that urn providing the extra 50, 150 damage over time. The double walk is going to bring him out. Should be having some dust, but you know, he, his team's been doing a very good job. But oh, he's going for a paper fly. No. Hey, he still has a full bottle and 10 charges. He can keep this up, like, honestly. He could. And here we go. Bounty Hunter getting position. It's, it's good for him to get those tracks off as well. And Sasu, oh, no. He's going to be dead. Look at this gold chart, though. It is not looking back. Ice Bath's going to miss as well. And we, I think they should just wait for another track. Got one more second. But he just died way too quickly for the track to even come off cooldown. This is where the game is coming on to. And, again, like predicted from the draft, first six minutes, very, very, like, slow, very, very steady. And past that point, Virtus Pro going crazy. Barrett gets a blink dagger. NS 11 minute blink dagger. Wow. As ridiculous. A yeah, ridiculous. And he's been yeah. ganking. He's been buying dust. He is, uh. Managed to get that timing. Usually you want blink dagger if you rush it by around, like, the 12 minute mark. Even he's, in a he's... safe lane in our mid lane. But he got it jungling and roaming. And this tower is going to take the ball. The one thing that went right is that they killed Luna. But they're going to need a lot more level speed master. Oh, he's he hit level 6, but he's going to die. Yeah, he hit level 6 right there, which is key. But right now, everything is happening on the top lane. Uh, defensive uh, Cabbage in position. He does have to access into the Ravage, and I'm sure the Radiant team knows that as well. But here comes a Luna. There is the track providing the extra MS. The track goes on Cabbage as well. Luna could easily dive in with a Creeps tanky and drop the Ravage, but... Uh, she is quite squishy, don't really want to go for it. Tower's going to get destroyed, and suddenly Cabbage, out of nowhere, without the protection of that tier 1 tower, everybody's on the win. Where's the Night Stalker? Night Stalker just grabbing the rune. He's seemingly hasting up the river with a couple illusions, and he could, with the sight help of Track, could really go in right now. Are they going to go? That's the question. 30 seconds left on nighttime, and Darkness is on cooldown, so... Uh, they might play it safe, or if they should go, they should go right now, and looks like they are going to go right now. Uh, no, Night Stalker is just gonna chill for a bit, I suppose. Meanwhile, on the bottom lane, Batrider gonna continue to farm, and has probably the most gold he's ever seen in his life. Has a ring of health as well. So uh, he's gonna go for Hood or Vanguard, whatever he wants, probably a Hood. And uh, meanwhile, PL has not made any item progression, just constantly been pressured, constantly been dying. And it's not looking good for CPL, but at least the first night is gonna end. No, he popped another darkness, just yep. to extend it. More I mean, intimidation this is darkness, I guess. This is well, even though like he's not using fights because it's nightfall, like you're and because you've been losing so many kills, it's like night, it's night soccer, he's running around. Just that fact alone is enough to keep PL and, and the rest of the team back. PL though is staying near that tier two tower, but here you go, bandit. He's probably not gonna get the kill, but he's gonna just harass nonetheless. Sasu gotta get back. Sasu is actually taking the fight, losing a lot of HP very rapidly. Bandit trying to try for the shuriken. I'm not sure why Sasu thought he could take the fight and well, well, he now I think he realized Bounty Hunter didn't have enough mana, but Bounty Hunter did have a wand and wanded up so, for the mana, so... Yep. So he has about 20 more seconds to think about that interesting decision he made. And here we go, tier 2. Uh, there's a lot of people kind of conglomerate around there. That Rider with the flaming lasso and the blink, although very low mana to use everything. So he should just get out at this point. Oh, nice Docker in a little bit bad position. 3 or 4 heroes getting it. Oh, nice. Nice bounces on the flame. But Beastmaster Roy does get dropped off. Where's the telekinesis? There you go. And the boy is going to get picked up as well. There you go. Kill against the nice Docker. And he has a huge kill streak. 
So Jakiro just earned himself a lot of extra gold. Yep, now is the time to engage. They realize Night Stalker's ultimate's on cooldown. It's not going to be nighttime for a long while. But meanwhile, the top tower is being pressured. Luna well on her way towards BKB. And a track immediately goes on the Phantom Hunter. Bounty Hunter is scaring him away. Uh, no teleportations in to defend this top tier 2 tower. And uh, even though they killed the Night Stalker, PL is not getting farmed. And Luna is. Yep. One of the things about playing a Night Stalker, playing with the Night Stalker on your team, is that oh, during Night Stalker. Luna. No, track Luna. As there's going to be another engagement. Uh, Ice Path manages to hit the Bounty Hunter. As he's going to escape. But yeah. Sorry. Yeah, Bounty Hunter providing track is going to be so very key for Luna already very, very quick. Oh, is he going to drop off the Ravage? There's a Ravage right now. Shift focus on... Ca no, everybody runs as now Luna Eclipse is in position. Luna Eclipse is stolen though. Can he drop... No, that's just a Luna Beam. Very good job by... Uh, very good job by Airman. But looks like Luna is going to out damage works by quite a bit. Bandit getting in position. And there's going to be a track. One hit. Look at the huge hit. And despite getting the Ravage off without a nice soccer being a team fight, the difference in terms of level difference in terms the EXE is too much. Sasu getting position. Do they have detection? No, they don't. Sasu waiting for the kill. Cancels the oh nice cancel on the region. One more hit's gonna get the kill. Uh, Sasu though out of uh, mana get out there, but Beastmaster in position. Beastmaster looking for the kill on NS. Banda getting position as well. Where's the track? No track. Track for the kill. One for one trace. Sasu now gotta run. He can't really fight this. No more mana for Doppelwalk. Interest? No interest. Not gonna bring him up there as well. Bandit, survivor of this team fight. 2000 go with the Ogre Club and Snatch. Filthy rich. Keep in mind, Venomancer and Night Stalker were not anywhere near that fight. They used yep. to ravage. Man, it's looking really, really bad as uh, Santa is now farmed up, has two components of his BKB. Look at the goal graph. My god, it's approaching 20k, 16 minutes in. Experience graph tells a similar tale. This game is, uh, once they hit the second night, this game will end very, very quickly. Yeah, it's going to be very, very tough. I, wanna get, I don't want to count them out because they do have very... Great lockdown spells. Uh, Beastmaster Roar, uh, in conjunction with the burst damage output, like they could do something. I don't think it's as fat out. Even the Go charts tells differently. I think this game's a little bit closer because of the hero potential uh, of the Dire team than the previous games that we've been casting uh, against uh, against uh, Virtus Pro. But with that said, it's still a very very far stretch to imagine the Dire team to come back. On oh, the top lane nice though, they do steal. see Bandit out of Amana completely, and that's what I mean. These heroes could actually grab a couple of kills. The track is up on uh, Wex, Vex, and that's actually is pretty big. Track bonus gold. Oh, Phantom Lancer wow. just got 500 extra. Whew, that's a big kill. That is gonna mean a lot for PL. He had not been able to get to farm. Now he picks up another blade of lacquer. He's gonna have the robe of Magi as well. Only 800 gold away from Diffusal. Uh, meanwhile, the rain gonna. Be able to take Roshan, Night Stalker pops a regen rune. Uh, still quite a while before the next Nightfall, but he does have Darkness if they want to take a fight. Night Stalker picks up the Aegis so he can dive even more aggressively. Gonna have the Aghanim Scepter finished. It's gonna be delivered to him probably right about now. Yep, he's gonna purchase all three items. So now he has that map pack going on. So uh, it's gonna be scary, but PL picking up a huge bounty like you said is gonna be extremely important and they do have the Ravage up with the Roar. Yep, man, he's gonna basically just uh play it very aggressively, farm on the top lane, and until the very, very last moment, uh, he's going to TP back. But before that, he's going to try to get as much gold as possible. If he could actually get up to his Diffusal Blade uh, before the team fight breaks out in the mid, it was very, very key. Bandit is going to be defending now. So it is a 5v4 situation on the tier 2 mid, but with no Purge Blade being finished. And well, there's a hugely stacked camp here. Sasu's not going to go farm for it. He's going to walk back and start to defend. Glyph already used teleportation coming in. That's from Sasu. Track is being so crucial right now for the Dire team because they get MS. But no, Cabbage gets initiated. And Beastmaster Roar does drop in. Rabbit does go off here before he dies. Pretty big play. And that's in a little bit of trouble. Sasu going to go for the kill. Sasu gets a kill EXP at the very least. Luna BKB running out very soon. Tier one, tier 2 tower being destroyed. But look at this Night Stalker. He's just way too tanky. Ages of Mortal not being used, at least not right now. Gonna murder that pig, but I think CPL, despite losing an extra hero and a tower, I think they're happy with that engagement. They're not happy with the fact that they couldn't win 5v4. Balancing was not there. But Sasu now, of course, has that purge blade. They still have the racks, so that's something to be celebrated about. Man, that time to escape with like 10 HP before he casted the Ravage because he was chain stunned. Uh, Kraken Shell, too good. Managed to dispel the lasso. Uh, Axe is gonna fly in, but the night time is up. Uh, how much more seconds on that artificial darkness? Not too much. So, uh, but they do have Aegis, they have Aghanims. Just turns daytime. Santa is in here. He smells blood. Will he go for it? Lucent being casted on the Rubik track, revealing the Rubik. He immediately gets shot. 
as uh, Cabbage is going to take a bunch of damage by this Luna. Now the Glaives are going to work, killing everybody who's clumped up together. Looks like Saucy trying to do as much work as possible. The Aegis does expire on the Night Stalker. Macrofire doing huge amounts of damage. Looks like Phantomancer will get the kill. Just finished Diffusal. That could be crucial. Kills the Luna, but Night Stalker comes back with full HP. He smells blood. He wants blood. Can he get it? As NS has returned to the battle after dying, they kill the Rubik. Phantom Lancer can only do so much, but they're going to lose a Rex, but considering the situation they're in, that's fine for them. They have well, the respawn time uh, of the Dire Team is fairly low, but everybody now is now focusing on the Rex. They have no more Glyph. They are going to lose one melee Rex. I don't think the Dire Team will GG out of it just yet, but they're still so, so far behind. Phantom Lancer is up to another couple of... Did he buy something? Did he buy back? I'm not sure. Uh, whatever the case might be, he's out of go at this point though, and they're not going to get too many kills unless somebody stay long enough for uh, the Purge Blade to really start getting work. And of course, you got to keep in mind that with all these kills being exchanged, the Radiant team is slowly pulling further ahead because of track bonus goal. Yeah, Luna bought back to get back into the fight sooner, and as uh, Just Respawn has picked up the gem that he dropped earlier, so he's back on him, trying to eliminate the vision. Uh, Bounty Hunter has finished the BKB, going to go for Desolator as well. Um... Phantom Lancer just finished, just finished the defusal right before that Rax fight, so yeah. that's why he doesn't have any gold. But that track definitely uh, keeping him alive, but Rubik uh, unfortunately doesn't have any more. He did die as uh, Ravage is up, so they can try to make another defense. Uh, but it's about to turn nighttime, and the second night will finally start for Night Stalker. Yeah, Virtus Pro will one Rax up right now. They, they don't really need to have a... A sense of urgency to really go in because because there is a nice stalker bat rider with a link and a bounty hunter on the radiant team it's very difficult for the dire to walk out as i say that though they see the team fight on the jungle they're gonna take it silence on cabbage cabbage you need to pop the raft right now do it before you die no he does not get it off but they do kill xxx before he does die ns now is uh, losing a little bit of hp luna full hp right now where is pl pl too low to actually continue to take fighting but again one for one two, one for two trade two for two trade excuse me sasu does get picked off at the end and suddenly the fight is not worth it now track on paper flower and band is going in he does get a janata slow and everybody's coming in and i do believe with this recent team fight it's fair to call it gg now yeah 30 to 11 as a valid defense by cpl but keep in mind bounty hunter all these team fights it seems like uh virtus pro taking it 4v5 and always seem to come ahead but they do have ravage that could mean something a night stalker it is nighttime gonna go on to the pl roar it is not up just yet what is the cooldown here comes the ravage as night stalker being in place for a huge amount of damage so tanky but he is gonna die cabbage takes the fall as well virtus pro night stalker already bought back here comes firefly by ns can you get anything done bounty are made to kill the phantom so that could be huge as looks like the beastmaster take the fall as well santa cleaning up everybody and it is chris's for him literally as uh, here comes Luna, they get one last hill, bounty on a triple kill, getting so much track gold, it is ridiculous. Finishes the death later at the opposing shop with 1k in the bank to spare. Yep. GG well played. Yeah. Need that death to apply, apply to the minus 6 armor on the building. Push faster. Man. Relentless, and again, less than 25 minutes, Virtus Pro claim another victim. But we'll see if uh, Clan Poland can make... Hit the minimize. We'll see if uh, Clan Fallen can make recovery in game two. Uh, I think Luminous will have to leave me for that game, but hopefully you will stay tuned. As uh, any last words, Luminous? No, I, I just hope that somebody figure out this team. Virtus Pro, I mean, they've been playing one strat. It's not like they can't play other strats, but I like to see teams force them to play a different strat. Yep, as uh, Virtus Pro is showing that they are definitely a scary team when they're all on a roll. Um, we'll see if they can apply this to the second game and maybe in their future games soon enough. But with me is Lunas Inverse. This has been the Frag by Thor Open Qualifier. Number 5, finals match number 1. As uh, three more qualifiers left after this one. So stay tuned. And uh, thank you to Lunas for casting. And uh, yeah, <laughs> game's over. So uh, please follow me twitch.tv slash bball773. Subscribe to me on YouTube, bball773. And Help out Luminous as well, Luminous Inverse, on all forms of media. But thank you for watching, and I'll see you very soon. GG!